Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm actually American. I just live in Cape Town. And Unequal Scenes is an art and technology platform. And we're using art and technology to bring awareness to some of the world's biggest problems, including the SDGs. So if we can go to the next slide. I want to tell you a little story to start off. This is Cape Town. This is my home. This is my city. And this is the perspective that everyone knows. You can see there's a mountain there with three separate peaks. It's a very beautiful place. Everyone knows what it looks like. There's not too much to talk about, right? Everyone knows what it looks like. In 2016, I went to America. I bought a drone because I'm a photographer. I went home, bought a drone. Home is in Seattle to add more value to my photography business in Cape Town. And when I came back, what I wanted to do was take tourism videos. So this isn't a story about how I've been committed to the SDGs for my whole life. I'm not going to lie to you. But in 2016, I wanted to take tourism videos of Table Mountain. And I flew over Table Mountain when we were hiking on it, me and my friends, put that video onto YouTube. And my friend who grew up in Cape Town said, wow, I've never seen Table Mountain look like that before. So this was my light bulb moment. This was the whole start of Unequal Scenes because I realized if I could change his perspective on what that mountain looked like, then I could change perspectives on a lot of things. And I came to Cape Town in the first place to study anthropology. I knew that it was a very unequal city. I started to think, what else could I do? So I took my drone. I took it to a part of the city that I knew to be extremely unequal. Um, during apartheid, obviously, non-whites and whites were separate. They, could, they had to live in separate areas. So I went to an area called Masapumalele, which you can see on the left here. I put my drone on the ground. It was, there was very high walls because there's a lot of crime in South Africa. Flew up and took this photo. Overnight, this photo went viral. It became a sensation in South Africa. Um, there was a thousand shares overnight, a hundred, hundreds of comments, and people really getting angry, getting upset, being provoked, being mad about what this photo represented. And I realized that my hypothesis was correct, was that changing people's perspectives on issues that they thought they knew what they looked like actually makes a huge difference and can bring a lot of attention and a lot of attention means a lot of opportunities for solutions. So what I did was I came up with a methodology, and this methodology I'll call See, Acknowledge, Act. And by seeing, as you can see here, obviously I'm a photographer, I use a lot of visual and creative means to get points across. I've branched into mostly the climate change, inequality, um, and sustainable cities and communities for unequal scenes, but a variety of techniques, using 360 video, using drones, using video, uh, using photos, using online tools, using print tools, and a variety of different venues to get people to talk about these different issues. But acknowledge, what do I mean by acknowledge? Seeing something doesn't make any difference unless it becomes relevant to you. And nothing's going to happen to change what's wrong with the world unless people find that those problems are relevant to their lives. And so. Um, and so art has this ability to lead us to a state of an imaginary. And by that I mean when you see something and it's compelling and creative, your brain actually turns into a different state. And they've done studies on this that you are allowed to see more childlike in a way that your preconceived notions melt away and you actually develop an imaginary. And this imaginary is extremely important when we're talking about the SDGs and we're talking about driving people to action. Because you can read all the data, you can read all the graphs, you can hear people like me stand up on stage all you want. But until your brain enters that imaginary, there's no real opportunity for change. That's the first part, C. Um, I guarantee you, actually, you've seen images of poverty and inequality before 2016 that were clip arts, that were images of poor African children in broken down areas of Africa, but it wasn't really relevant, right? So by adding the houses to the side of my images there, and this happened, I'm not going to admit, by accident, but it since turned into a strategy, it creates that acknowledgement, it creates that relevance in my images. Finally, action. This is where the SDGs really come into play and how we can change the world. We're not going to solve them simply by taking photos. And nor will creatives be the only people necessary here. This is going to take a spectrum of actors. And I'm not saying that I have a silver bullet or that unequal scenes has become the only thing that people should support, but it's definitely on the spectrum of the different types of actors that we need to really move the needle on these issues. 
we work with a variety of actors, nonprofit, educational institutions, and for-profit actors. We strive to be ethical in how we operate and interact uh, with the SDGs and with the world, and we expect that of our partners as well. We understand that the need to be ethical, intersectional, and historically sensitive. I'm very cognizant of the fact that I'm an American living in South Africa. So going about our work in a historically sensitive way with the understandings that we may not be the smartest people in the room and we want to listen and we want to create art that is inclusive as well um, is extremely important to us. We want to drive action, but we want to drive the right kind of action. Finally, I just want to go back to that image of Table Mountain that I started with. When I flew above that mountain and my friends saw it, I wasn't actually providing them the answer to anything. What I did do, though, was create an imaginary in his mind, a space for him to briefly and temporarily revert to that mind state where he didn't immediately revert to the narrative which he always had. You hear a lot, about talk, a lot, of, a lot of talk about changing the narrative. That's what that means. Changing the narrative, we all have a narrative inside our heads right now of what the SDGs mean. Changing that narrative involves getting to an imaginary where we can be fertile enough, our brains can be fertile enough to grow a new narrative. And that's gonna take more than just myself, it's gonna take all of us. Much like Greta has shown us so eloquently this week with her movements of students and her speech at the UN just across the way, and today in Montreal, that a childlike openness to seeing the world with curiosity and without preconceived notions can actually drive incredible action. It begets a fertile mind and a fertile soul, which inevitably will lead us to outcomes that we all wanna see. Not because it's a trick, not because it's manipulation, but because a healthy, fair, sustainable world is in all of our best interests. Thank you.